the most significant mistakes so many leaders have made in the last 20 years, and it's very upsetting to me, is that they've put their self-interest ahead of the best interests of the institutions of the organizations they run. And that, to me, is the greatest failing of a leader. If you're looking out for your own money, fame, power, or glory, that's wrong. As Peter Drucker said, leadership is not about those things. It's about responsibility. And I think it's a deep responsibility you have to the people you work with, your customers, your employees, uh, your shareholders, and all those constituencies you represent. And that's an obligation. And carrying that responsibility out is the essence of good leadership. I think the biggest mistake that a, that a leader can make is uh, betraying trust. Um, it's something that's uh, very, very valued in the relationship between uh, leaders and everybody else. And um, if, you, if you break that one, uh, none of the rest of it's going to matter. The biggest mistake a leader can make, I believe, is um, being certain. Things are constantly changing. Things are unpredictable. When we um, confuse the stability of our mindsets with the stability of the underlying phenomenon, we act as if we know. When you think you know, you don't pay any attention any longer. Why bother since you know? Again, since things are always changing, uncertainty should be the rule. And what you want is a leader to learn how to exploit the power in uncertainty. Gosh, I think probably to, to not to live up to their values. Leaders who espouse values but don't deliver them are very rapidly found out and need very rapidly turned over. So I think that's probably the, the biggest crime a leader can commit. And I think, of course, this, this is one aspect of the reason why I think there's so much leader churn today. Um, I think to be so overly enamored with their vision that they lose all, um, you know, all capacity for self-doubt. You know, you oftentimes see, and I think it's the flip side of good leadership, of inspiring leadership, of passionate leadership, is that sometimes you can get caught up in becoming absolutely, completely, single-mindedly focused on the pursuit of, um, of a purpose. And that moves from being, um, you know, from being a passion and a purpose to becoming an obsession. And at that point, perhaps when you're the most inspiring, because that becomes your all, you know, your all life, your all world, and that's what you're trying to do and pursue and get others to do, you can also be the most vulnerable because, in fact, you might lose the capacity to, you know, look at, um, you know, what are the consequences of what you're trying to do, you know, what other ways might there be, what are the voices that you might be disenfranchising in that, um, you know, passionate and relentless pursuit. Uh, from my experience, I would say uh, arrogance, personal arrogance and hubris, uh, and confusing uh, the size of the enterprise or the success of the enterprise uh, with the individual's persona. Uh, I think that uh, creates greater social distance and power distance, and can also, uh, which is demotivating uh, for most organizations and people. And uh, secondly, it, uh, I think, uh, increases the chances of making uh, big mistakes. Um, I think the biggest mistake a leader can make is potentially acting too fast um, and executing before actually thinking through the issue. Uh, in corporate America uh, and even in government, often you find that you're drinking from a fire hose of issues that are coming at you. And there's very little time to actually step back, evaluate, and think about what you're doing, and then enter, enter the stage with a, new, with a new clear vision of where you're going. Most of the time, it's very much a harness the, harness the flow of, uh, of issues and, and address those. So realistically, you know, my opinion is the best thing a leader can do is take a step back from the situation with their management team, seek advice, think through it, even if it, even if it is a five-minute process, and then move back to execution. Um, this both, you know, this, this stepping back is both good in the short term in solving issues, but also in long-term management and thinking through strategy for a firm. There are two big mistakes that leaders can make. My understanding of the research and my experience with leaders is we're very, as followers, and I think we're very Catholic with a small c. We'll take, accept almost any leadership style. You know, little leaders, meek leaders, tall, big, loud, short, tall. 
we're very eclectic, we're, we're very forgiving on leaderships, a whole range of leadership styles, as long as two things are true. One, uh, and we're great at sniffing the first one out, as soon as we get a first little sniff that it's all about the leader instead of something else, in the service of something bigger, if it's all about, if my efforts are all about her or all about him, that's the first sin. So that's the first big mistake. It has to be about something larger than yourself. The second major uh, mistake that I see is this, whether it's called authentic or not being authentic, it's trying to be something else, being inconsistent. The word integrity means whole, it means consistency. Again, the greatest fear we see from uh, people in the workplace is, which one's coming in today? Is this person going to be the one who comes in, puts her arm around me, and oh, how are you doing today? Or the one who's talking behind my back and stabbing me in the back and being the Jekyll and Hyde? So the two biggest mistakes are uh, not being authentic and consistent and predictable and being all about you and not something bigger than yourself. I think the biggest mistake a leader can make, or maybe the worst trait a leader can have, is to not be self-reflective. So the admired leaders that I've worked with and the people just in, in my own day-to-day -day that, um, that I've apprenticed myself to and really wanted to follow have been people who are constantly reviewing their own behavior, who are thinking about how they can develop themselves and thinking about how their behavior impacts other people. So I, I think unless somebody is willing to hold up a mirror to themselves and have an honest-to-God conversation about how they're doing, what effect their leadership is having, and what effect they have on other people, I, I don't think they'll be effect, effective as leaders. And I think conversely, the people who are the worst leaders are people who just bulldoze forward and plow f forward through life, making mistakes, not really looking back on the past, not learning as they go, and, and not necessarily being self-aware about how they're affecting the people around them.